So now I'm going to cover how you might want to better format graphs in Excel because the defaults are a bit they're a bit ugly. Um, so I've got some concentration on absorbance data here. It's effectively random numbers. I'm going to insert a scatter graph, and it's only ever going to be a scatter graph. Um, you don't want to be if it's data like this. You don't want to be connecting the dots. Uh, because we want to something to have a straight line and re and my rule of thumb would be you either connect the dots or you fit a straight line to it um, in this case we want to fit a straight line to it to get a gradient and I'll just put that on now just to show it right click trend line so we want that instead of it connected and how do we want to tidy this up well there's a couple of things wrong here that I think we need to get rid of immediately uh, and one thing is this title usually if you're doing first year undergraduate chemistry or school level chemistry someone will tell you do uh, my graph of and then you'll type in whatever the x-axis and the y-axis are um, I, I would recommend not doing that if you're going to write a report I would just delete that because we're going to use figure captions instead uh, and one thing I think to get rid of, because they're not always useful, you can include them if you think they're useful. I usually get rid of the lines in the background. It, they get a bit, a bit distracting. Now, you might also want to consider putting the equation of the line and the R squared on. Um, but again, we're going to stick that in the figure caption. We'll see this in a minute. Uh, the one thing I'll probably change first is these axes. So what you can see here is that all those numbers are 1.000, 9 it's, it's a bit much, right? And uh, the reason that it looks like that is because Excel is taking the formatting uh, from here. And what I've done to here is this has got a number style on it. If you look at the top, it's a number and there are certain numbers of decimal places. And one of the cheap and easy ways of doing that is just to keep knocking down the decimal places down to something reasonable uh, and then what you get is Excel will update these axis titles to have that many significant figures or decimal places whichever now that might be a problem because maybe you want all those when you copy this table into your report later so you don't want to get rid of them so what we're going to do is double click on the axis and we're going to go into these axis options and the options that you fiddle around with are usually this little bar graph shape here pick that and we're going to come down to number and what it has here is a number category and it lets you set the number of decimal places so maybe i just want one there you go one decimal place and that's overwritten what was in this column i'm going to do the same for the bottom half double i don't even need to double click on this because this menu is still open come down to the number section here decimal places one there you go and that's now tidied up uh, a couple of other things let's let's tidy this up a little bit better. when i've got the axis selected i want to go into the format tab shape outline and set it to black same thing for here that's so oh, again optional but the default is a kind of a gray color maybe you want to make it stand out a little bit better when you are uh, putting it into your report I'm going to highlight it and make sure the font size is reasonable. I'm going to boost it up to about 11 or 12. And maybe that's a bit too dense. So if I highlight that um, color, that axis, come down to, uh, oh, is it under tick marks? I can never remember. These major units, there it is. Under the axis options, I want to set the major units to be 0 0.2. So it's only going to put a unit on every 0 0.2 instead of 0.1 that tidies things up a little bit All right now i'm going to copy that right click go into a word document and paste it in and uh, just control c control v uh, one thing i haven't added here are axes because i'm feeling lazy i'll add that back in a second uh and you get this bounding box there which is actually i think i think that takes you out of the document it makes it look like you pasted in a graph from excel it doesn't really integrate very well so let's let's go back to Excel and get rid of that. So the way to get rid of that is by selecting the whole graph, jump to the format tab, and then the shape outline there, no outline. Now if we copy it, go back to our Word document, there you go. Now it looks a little bit more integrated. That looks like it belongs there. So if I do 
my insert my figure caption I can put all my a graph to show information there and there I would include things like what's this graph for what's it doing what are the outliers why are the outliers there um, what are the what's the intercept and the gradient and what are the standard errors of those I would put that information in the caption um, yeah we may as well do yeah let's go ahead and do that in fact let's delete that go back to Excel and we'll we'll do it I'm gonna close that now highlighting this I'm gonna put access titles on maybe I'll do concentration or just conch slash molar doesn't really matter and then here absorb absorbance and let's let, let's get the data for this so here I'm going to highlight my four squares type in the line ST known Y's those are my Y values known X is that value comma true to set the intercept normally true to return the additional regression statistics close that bracket and control shift return there we go so then, then i will probably try coral to return the correlation coefficient i'll just stick those two in there so that's all my data and now if i copy that put it back into word Let's put something better than a graph to show, shall we? Let's increase the size of this. Um, calibration graph of five points from concentration yeah, 0 0.1 to 1.0. Oh. And I will probably say, look, what was the gradient? No point eight one plus minus no point eight plus minus point one. Let's do that. One and intercept. Learn to remember these numbers. No point zero seven plus or minus no point zero eight. Not a very very accurate intercept. That is it. That's pretty much zero. And maybe we could add units on that if we wanted so that would be a much better looking graph and a more informative caption here as well uh, so I may as well stick the correlation coefficient in there 0.95 make sure that r squared is super scripted so we look at something like that. That's a little bit better, probably a thesis style document. If you want to do it as a two column layout, you'd probably need to make sure that this font size is appropriate. Um, but that's the main thing to really consider. So that hopefully gets you a slightly better looking uh, chart. Uh, if you do it enough like this and you learn how to format Excel properly, everyone then immediately assumes that you are using professional software and not Excel for it, which is always a fun thing to do. Anyway, hope that lets you produce a slightly better graph using this software uh, and hope to see it more in your reports later.